Joining us now is Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek was there in Atlanta yesterday. Vivek, I want to get your immediate reaction to what happened last night and the implications for who we may or may not be running up against moving forward. Yeah, well, Charlie, look, I said this in the Republican debates and over the course of my entire presidential campaign last year, this was highly unlikely ever to be a Biden opponent that we were up against. And last night made that clear as day. For a second, even taking the partisan goggles off, it was sad. Just as a U.S. citizen, as a citizen of this country, Republican or Democrat, to see a nominal president of the United States who is failing to function even the basic activities of daily living of a human being. This is a lie, and I think the government owes the people of this country an answer that it's now clear that this man is not running the country. If it's not Joe Biden, who actually is? And I think we, the people, deserve a response on that. But I think that was the number one takeaway from last night. President Trump did an outstanding job. I think it was one of his best debate performances. I think it might be one of the best debate performances in modern history, actually. He landed some authentic messages that I think came through the TV. I think at the point where he said, quite honestly, and I know he believes this, he wishes that Joe Biden were a good president, because if he were, then Donald Trump wouldn't have to be putting himself through this. He could be living a better life. I think that landed with a lot of independents, with a lot of CEOs who I've talked to, with a lot of people who are maybe centrists or independents that are leaning towards Trump. I think that really spoke to them. And I think that that landed with them in a way that some of the other things that we might have said on the, on the right may not have landed with them in the same way. So I think it was a success on a number of counts. I think it opens up some real questions that our government owes the people some hard answers on in terms of who's actually running the country right now we deserve to know. And I do think that this was a trap in the making. This was intentional. What we saw last night, it was not an accident. It was by intentional design. And how do we know that? It's because the Democratic Party explicitly negotiated for this unusually early debate, the earliest debate that's taken place in American history, the first one ever before the nominating con convention of either party. Why did they do it? It was their final opportunity to toss the old man to one side. As I've been saying for the entire last year and a half, that's exactly what they're going to do. And what they described as a conspiracy theory last year has now become a reality today. And I have my views on how this is going to go, but I think it's going to make for a very eventful five months ahead. And that's why complacency is not an option for us, Charlie. I think it's one of the traps we can fall into. The other side has always been one step ahead. And I think we risk falling into the trap of complacency if we think that the race is over because Biden failed. It may just be that the race is just now beginning. Lots of people might have thought we won the election last night. That is not true. Enjoy it. We, it's been a long time since we've had a night to really enjoy where the Democrats are freaking out. The election might just be starting. You said this at the Republican primary debates. Roll tape 174. I also want to close with one message to the Democrat Party. End this farce that Joe Biden is going to be your nominee. We know he's not even the president of the United States. He's a puppet for the managerial class. So have the guts to step up and be honest about who you're actually going to put up so we can have an honest debate. Biden should step aside, end his candidacy now, so we can see whether it's Newsom or Michelle Obama or whoever else. All right, Just Mr. tell us the truth so we can have an honest debate. <laughs> Ambassador. Boy, that feels like a lifetime ago. Vivek, then what is the process and the timeline of how you think they're going to remove Joe Biden? Because right now, Joe Biden is rallying his supporters. Um, they're chanting four more years. He's leaning in. He's white knuckling. Can this be done if Joe Biden white knuckles? I think they're chanting four more years for Obama. I think it's effectively who they're rooting for. I think that that in some measure may be the person or among those who are behind the scenes right now anyway. The reality is I don't think Michelle Obama is off the table. I don't think a lot of these other candidates for the Democrats are off the table who they've otherwise dismissed so far. And in some ways, Charlie, that's a best case scenario that they're trying to play for because if somebody comes in really late, it avoids them being scrutinized, but has the election occur right where they're still in the middle of the honeymoon phase. That would be wrong. It would be deceptive. It would be a lie on the American people. And if and when that happens, I want people at home and independents and libertarians and even Democrats to ask themselves, are you going to tolerate a leadership class in this country that lies to you that explicitly? Just six weeks ago, it was New York Times headlines claiming that it was creative right-wing video clipping that was selective yep. editing showing Joe Biden to be frail. You know what? None of that video clipping, however good those video clippers were, none of them could have done a better job of proving the point than actually Joe Biden directly for an hour and a half on that stage last night. And so my message to anybody in this country who is surprised by what they saw last night, if you're actually surprised, when Biden's frailties have been this clear for this long. Ask yourself if the media could lie to you about that. 
What else are they also lying to you about right now? It's just like they lied to you about the Russia collusion hoax, the origin of COVID, everything else. What else are they lying to you about right now? And I hope that's an eye-opening moment to a lot of people. Charlie, I think the good news is I, I talked to a lot of people who have been successful multi-billionaires, investors, et cetera, who even a year ago, entrepreneurs who wouldn't have thought of even publicly voicing support for Donald Trump, who after a performance like last night, I think do feel some license to say, you know what? Joe Biden has no business being the president of the United States. It's time to coalesce around Donald Trump, even if we don't agree with everything he says. And I think there's a temptation on our side. I even feel some of this when I have those conversations to sort of be annoyed, to say, okay, where were you a year ago? And where were you two years ago? And why weren't you saying the same thing? I think we've actually got to resist that. If we want to win the election this year, even for people who are coming to the same views that people like you and I might have had a year ago, we should say, you know what? We respect somebody who's able to change their mind. That's how we're going to grow our America First coalition and really turn this election on the positive side. So on the negative side, complacency is not an option. But on the positive side, this could be the first landslide election possibility we've had in decades, in a generation. And think about what that does for the possibility of actually national unity, something we've forgotten in the United States, to unite around a leader like Donald Trump. That's a generational opportunity that I don't want to squander. And that's going to require us to give space to centrists and even people on the center left, give them the space not to put them in a box and say you were wrong and have to have the views you had a year ago, but to say that, you know what, if you want to open your mind and actually open your eyes and say, we're all human beings that have made some mistakes, great. I think this is an attitude. This is a time for us to be charitable to those kinds of voters, be they CEOs or university leaders or anybody else, to be able to come with us because we're going to need every bit of that to win this in a big way. Joe Biden is white knuckling in a very serious way. I think we need to broaden this critique beyond Joe Biden to the entire Democrat Party and how the Democrat Party has been lying about us, as you say, Vivek. This is a very powerful montage. We played it, played it previously that it's not just a Joe Biden thing. It's that they've been covering up for this. This is a national security issue. This is a violation of the fidelity to the country. This involves Schumer and Pelosi. This involves Debbie Dingell. This involves Maxine Waters. This involves Alejandro Mayorkas. This involves Chris Murphy. This involves Coons. Every major Democrat when asked, uh, J.B. Pritzker uh, from Dan Schneiderman, all these guys, Oh, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre, he's the best we've ever seen him. And the American people can now understand our ruling class. They are pack of liars that your leaders lie to you repeatedly with zero, with zero concern for the truth. Play cut 157. He is sharp, intensely probing, and detail-oriented and focused. This is a man who is sharp, who is on top of his game, who knows what's going on. This guy's tough. He's smart. He's on his game. His mental acuity is great. This is a very sharp president. This is a man that's on his game. President Biden is absolutely fit. There's, there's not a problem. He's sharp. He's fit. He's always answering questions. He is on the ball. He was sharper than anyone I've seen. He is sharp. Uh, he is on top of things. There's no doubt in my mind that the president is mentally fit for office. Biden has proven himself to have a strong memory. He's completely mentally sharp. He's at the top of his game. Oh, they are stuck, Vivek. They have dug themselves a hole. Vivek, your response. Look, the reality is this is a wake-up call for America. Charlie, the media has lied and the government has lied systematically. You go straight down the list. This goes back a very long time. You go to the Iraq war, you go to the 2008 financial crisis, you could go to the Russia collusion hoax that never was, the Hunter Biden laptop story that was suppressed on the eve of the last election. Talk about the origin of COVID-19, the truth about what they suppressed and the basis for the prosecutions of January 6th. Look at that Supreme Court ruling coming out today, finally at least bringing back some semblance of the rule of law to this country. These people have lied and they have lied systematically without accountability. Is it any surprise that they continue to lie about Biden's fitness for office as well? And so that's my message to many Democrats and many independent minded libertarians or anybody else is you may not agree with 100 percent of what Donald Trump says, but you deserve a government that actually tells you the truth and isn't staffed by people who grew up in the very swamp that we need to go in there and drain. This is a once in a generation opportunity.
to restore the 1776 vision that our founding fathers had in mind when they declared independence from a lying British monarchy. It's time to declare our new independence in 2024. And if we squander this opportunity, we're not going to get it again. This is the moment for Americans to actually say, you know, what? I don't care what label you are, black or white or forget Democrat or Republican. Those labels don't mean anything. This is our chance to put back a government that actually just tells us, for God's sake, once and for all, give us the truth. We can handle it. And I think the fact that they've tried to coddle us this long and failed paves the way for an opportunity that if we squandered this time, we're not going to have it again. This is our time to step up and seize it this November. Vivek, then what needs to be our battle plan if they throw Donald Trump in prison on July 11th? Do, do you think that two questions, what's our battle plan or do, do you think and also do you think it's more or less likely that Mershon puts Trump in immediate prison sentence? I think they have been playing for this prison sentence for a long time, Charlie. If they were going to go this distance, they didn't want to stop halfway. But the reality is, if you look at the performance of last night, it's completely made all of this irrelevant, actually. And that's the beauty of Donald Trump and what you got to respect about everything he's done against what they set up as the odds. First, try to take him off the ballot without even a trial. Then multiple different cases, two federal cases, a Georgia case, as well as the New York case, all coming at once. Three of those cases now moved to one side. The New York conviction already acquitted in the eyes of the voting public. So even if they do put him in jail, he's in some ways immunized himself. He has created a shield based on truth, based on his vision for the future of this country. And I respect the hell out of him for that. And that's what makes America great, is leaders who are able to say, you know what? The people on the other side are going to continue to bring the arrows. It didn't stop our founding fathers from winning the revolution. And I don't think it's going to stop Donald Trump from winning this election if we all do our part as well. So whether they put him in prison or not, I think Donald Trump has it nailed to be able to explain to the American people why it's all a sham and why the reason they're imprisoning him is the very fact that he's running and trying to fix this country. What I think the actual battle plan is, is how do the rest of us do our part to ensure that actual victory such that when we come out in November, it's not... 50.1 razor thin margin minus some shenanigans. That's a loss. This has to be a landslide, has to be so big that any shenanigans don't make a difference in this election. And after last night, I think we have a first in a generation opportunity to do it. But you know what? You don't like early voting? Too bad. Play by the rules as they exist, unfortunately, so that we could change the rules to what they need to be. And we as a movement need to say, you know what? It's not just Donald Trump's job. If we're going to be saved, we're going to be saved because we save ourselves. And that, I think, is the real battle plan, irrespective of what they do, putting him in prison or not. Either way, I think that's going to work in Donald Trump's favor. And, and so so final question here, Vivek, I know I got to let you go in just a second here. A lot of people are worried about the path forward if they pull a Michelle Obama or a Gavin Newsom. I think it's critical this summer we define that we're running against the Democrat regime, not against Joe Biden. Your thoughts, Vivek Ramaswamy? The reality is that we are running against a machine. It's like the equivalent of an evil version of the San Antonio Spurs, right? It doesn't matter which player's on the field. It's a yep. machine that runs itself either way. I happened to bump into Gavin Newsom in the spin room and outside the spin room yesterday. The guy was as radiant as I've ever seen. I have doubts whether it'll be him versus somebody who checks the identity politic boxes like Michelle Obama. But that's exactly the attitude is it doesn't matter who we're against. We're running this, it's a holy mission that we're on to revive this country, regardless of what that machine puts up. And I also think it's something that our movement needs to keep in mind. And this is an interesting, maybe longer discussion for another day between us, Charlie. I think our own America First movement needs to keep our eye on the ball. Dismantling the deep state, dismantling yes. those three letter agencies, dismantling the regulatory state, that is actually our objective. And sometimes we risk taking our eye off the ball, going after other objectives on the way. No, shut it down. That has to be our objective. And I'm challenging everybody else in our movement. There may be a lot of other goals we want to solve for. None of them can actually call for expansion of the regulatory state. We keep our eye in that ball. We shut it down. This never happens again in American history. But this time, that is the machine we're up against. And we're going in to dismantle that machine. And it's going to take leaders, starting with Donald Trump, who have their eye on that objective and actually go in and deliver it. Vivek Ramaswamy, I know you got a dash. Thanks so much. Great work as always. Thank you. Thank you. Email us freedom at charliekirk.com. This is the 10 days of action. The Democrats are on defense, wondering if they even have a nominee. Let's not just watch and delight with popcorn. The delight is over. We didn't win an election, everybody. The election is not won. We, we, we're running up against the senile buffoon who is a spokesperson for the regime. Instead, let's pivot and move forward with voter registration. 
ballot chasing, doing the work in the grassroots. That is what is necessary. Wear your MAGA hat, register voters, get out in the streets, do the work. You could do that at tpaction.com slash vote. Let's have a contest. Who can register the most voters this weekend? When you register voters, let us know. Freedom at charliekirk.com. You guys can come on the show. We can talk about it. This is a great opportunity to expand the tent. The It's Project 42. Can we register 42,000 voters? Remember, 25 new voters get a signed copy of my new book, Right Wing Revolution. 100 voters get an invitation to be on my show to tell your story. 250 voters get flown out to Phoenix for a dinner. So check it out right now. Uh, that is tpaction.com slash vote. Become the force multiplier. Do the work. What a crazy week this has been, everybody. And next week, we get the immunity decision on Monday. So get ready for that. Do the work this weekend. Shabbat Shalom. And after your rest, get to work, register voters, and let's win. <laughs>